All right, let's 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 do this. How do you do? My name is Lane Raspberry. I'm Wikimedian in residence at the School of Data Science here at the University of Virginia. That means that I help anyone at the University of Virginia who wants to share information in Wikipedia to integrate that information into Wikipedia. I understand that you're medical students in the VMED program. I'm going to be presenting today for about 20 minutes and then I'll take your questions. Intro to Wikipedia's medical content for medical students. Uh, something that I'm curious to know and I, I'd like to ask all of you or think about this while, while I'm talking, how much interest does your group, VMED, have in a Wikipedia medical collaboration? I understand that you're in the medical school, you're not able to go to classes, everyone's in lockdown, and you're still interested in making an impact doing something. What I would say to you is that if there's anybody who has even one hour to share information that they have in Wikipedia, then Wikipedia welcomes this very much. What this means is that somebody takes their expertise and does a bit of research, goes to a Wikipedia article, reviews it, critiques it, says what's incorrect about it, or even thanks to people if they made it correct. Any kind of feedback is helpful for Wikipedia, and Wikipedia is maintained by students. If people are interested in this, what I'd propose is at a future time, not today, today we're just having conversation, that we could meet virtually again, do some co-working, or people could ask questions otherwise, edit Wikipedia on their own time, and do what they want. And I'm going to show you how this works for classes. So Wikipedia has a system for classes or groups of people, cohorts, clubs, to collaborate online, and then collectively gather what they've done and say, look, we, we did this editing, we did this activism, and, and here's our output for it. So as I said, I do this at, at the University of Virginia. I've been editing Wikipedia for uh, I, since 2008, supported a lot of classes, particularly classes in the health sciences, usually medical schools, in editing Wikipedia. Uh, what I'm going to cover today, the basics, why should anyone care about Wikipedia? Uh, perhaps you've heard that Wikipedia is dubious, or there's reasons why you should avoid Wikipedia. Let's address that. Have a review. Wikipedia has been around since 2001. People have an idea, but let's just review what, what is Wikipedia, what, what is this site, and what's it doing. I'm going to say something about how medical students can engage with Wikipedia, and as I said, invite any of you, your friends, your colleagues, to edit Wikipedia. Well, the reason why anyone should care about Wikipedia is that it's popular. Like, it's really popular. There's a simple explanation for that. It's quite obvious. If somebody searches for something in a conventional search engine, such as Google or Bing or DuckDuckGo or anything else, and there's a Wikipedia article covering that topic, then Wikipedia is high on the search engine results page. And what that means is that if you're interested in doing distribution or dissemination of information, perhaps as part of a health education campaign or just matter of educating the public on basic health topics, if you put your information into Wikipedia, then people who are looking for information on that topic will find it. That's just how Wikipedia works, and we have the data to back it up. So we know that just the slice of English Wikipedia that's covering medical topics, so we're talking about 40,000-ish health articles on English Wikipedia, that gets 200 million views a month. In the state of COVID, this is kind of unusual, I, I, I'll just tell you, we're getting about twice the traffic to health articles in lockdown, uh, unprecedented, but it's pretty stable, and over the years, we've, we track the different traffic, there's different trends here and there that we can remark on. We, we were watching the traffic for about 10 years, but in 2015, we got this paper together that compared Wikipedia, just the slice of Wikipedia that's covering health information, and compared that to the entirety of uh, NIH.gov, WebMD, Mayo Clinic, National Health Service, WHO. The CDC would be in between WHO and up to date on this page. The, those other websites, they're not quite serving the same purpose of Wikipedia. Wikipedia is getting more traffic than them anyway. And we can show this. It's possible to export the paper. We look at the traffic reports and things do change. So uh, for different reasons, NIH is becoming more popular, but PubMed, that's not the same audience reading PubMed as the people going to Wikipedia. Uh, Healthline, they're doing some interesting things with uh, computer generated health articles. Still, it's not exactly a competitor to Wikipedia. If Wikipedia is not the most consulted source of health information, at least it's still very popular. At least you can be sure 
if you share information in Wikipedia, people are going to read it. I'm saying all this just to say that it can be worth your time. If you want to get information to the public and you post it to Wikipedia, you will reach an audience by doing this. I've got a question. I wonder if you can unmute and answer this. If anything comes to your mind, just curious. So Wikipedia is nonprofit. Does anyone here know what other nonprofit websites have high internet ranking? And I've got some results from Amazon's Alexa service. Alexa is a, an Amazon analytics project that names the most popular websites. Any, any ideas? I'll just go through the answers. Let's take a look. Yes, yes, Carol. Yes, you got an answer? No, I was just thinking there probably aren't that many. That's what I yeah. would assume, that most yeah, of them so, are for profit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's all the websites in the top 500 that are non-commercial and popular. So Wikipedia, for about 10 years, it's been right in the top 10. BBC, Pirate Bay, very important nonprofit. Non, or it's not nonprofit, but it's non-commercial <laughs> effort. <laughs> Mozilla, making the Firefox browser. NAH for PubMed, and a lot of that's automated. Their data's kind of funny. Internet Archive, which is legitimately a peer of Wikipedia. They run the Wayback Machine, uh, archive old video games, <laughs> do all kinds of media, actually. Very, they have an emergency library. They're providing access to library materials inside the pandemic, the only online library that's doing this freely globally, U.S. Postal Service and WordPress. What I mean, and Carol, you're right. It, it's just that there's not a lot of competition in the nonprofit space, free and open space, to what Wikipedia does. And Wikipedia tracks the, the prominence of the copyright of what it does. It's free and open, open access material for anyone to reuse for any purpose. It's a, it's a good project. It's not like contributing to, to WebMD or some commercial service. So what is Wikipedia? Well, it's, it's an encyclopedia. And we define an encyclopedia by saying it's a summary of what's already been published. This has lots of implications. It means that there's a quality control process on Wikipedia. Maybe your professors didn't tell you that. There is. So if someone posts something to Wikipedia, then other humans check to see whether that meets Wikipedia standards for quality. And the typical standard for quality is, is there a citation? You start there. Yes or no. If there's no citation, you get rid of it. And then is a citation from a reliable source. So when I say anyone can edit Wikipedia, a lot of people get hung up on that. They mean, doesn't that mean crazy people can edit? Yes. Uh, so here's a Wikipedia article about a very important drug for diabetes. And anyone, even without registering an account, can click that edit button and change any of the text and any of the images in the articles. So that's completely true. And after they do that, the quality control process kicks in. Sources cited, are the sources reliable? There's a team that that escalates, like is this a medical article and it goes to the medical reviewers, did they cite such and such kind of source? We check these kind of things and we say that a source is reliable if it's the kind of source that say a health science librarian would approve for saying such a thing. So we do have a system in place, I could show that to you guys sometime. So what can medical students do with Wikipedia? What I would ask you is to, to jump into some article and edit it, you, you choose the article, you choose the topic, COVID, you're interested in COVID, anything else you're studying, that's fine too. So the kind of things that's appropriate to Wikipedia, it's usually not local interest. So Wikipedia is good for reaching a large general audience on the internet. It's difficult to do localized health information. Like supposing you wanna improve community health in Charlottesville, Wikipedia is not the appropriate venue for sharing that. And Wikipedia is also collaborative. So when you post something there, somebody else is gonna quality review you. Student group editing, there's a lot of precedents for this. So there's, there's guides for what is it like for a medical student to edit Wikipedia. You don't have to read these. I can support you with that. It's not that big of a deal. You, you click the edit button, anyone can do it. Certainly you guys can. There's something called the Wiki Education Foundation. They provide academic support for classes. If we want extra support, I'm just saying there's other infrastructure out there, but I'm, I'm with you. And there's a medical journal and nonprofit organization called Cochrane. They publish these review articles, solid for Wikipedia, kind of boring, but very safe to cite. And people from Cochrane can suggest and uh, even provide support to this, this group if, if you wanna edit anything with, with their journals. There's, there's support here and there. If we were to collaborate, I would create a cohort, an online cohort, you click to join, you press a button and you join, and then we start tracking what the VMED as a cohort does. And we'll get this kind of, report updated every minute. Wikipedia is digitally native. 
so the report will say, like for other University of Virginia classes, I've got this report and that I did 13 programs for 212 University of Virginia students and, and faculty and they added so many words, cited so many sources, and then we get this report of how many people actually read the content. So if VMED were to participate in this program, no commitment for anyone to continue to participate, but after you've edited, we start tracking the number of people who read the article you've edited. And this becomes a collective outcome or output of this group that, that's put into this. So that's how this works. You edit and then we get these kind of reports. And as far as social impact, you can compare this to what are your alternatives. So if you're sharing information, all we do is digital media. That's what Wikipedia does, it does publishing. So if you're talking about Wikipedia, you're talking about digital publishing. And if you think about comparing that to starting a new website or publishing to the University of Virginia website, it's not so high traffic. Someone can post a Facebook, someone can post a Twitter. It's hard to compare to Wikipedia. If you're editing a general interest article on Wikipedia, people are, are just gonna see that. I'm, I wanna show you a traffic report. And if somebody will request one of these, I'm gonna click these links. This entire slide series is online, but can I have some brave soul request that I click one of these links and we'll look at what the report is at these links, just so that I can show you some Wikipedia traffic reports. Anyone? Can we do the uh, third one? H Hindi. Let's look at Hindi. Okay, so if we're looking <clears throat> at, uh, let's see, what was this? Hindi, Hindi in 2020. You know, actually, uh, look at this. I've got it set up for Hindi 2019. It looks like I can't get a report. So I've got the 2019 report for Hindi Wikipedia. Wikipedia is in 300 different languages. And so I get all these reports. Let me just see who's, who's at the top. Uh, and let me pull a few of these actually. So most popular <laughs> Hindi article, we got this guy, right? Okay, so he's perennially popular. And then uh, what do we have here? So I'm gonna just translate this constitution. So every, every time this comes up and then we have major political issues, like whatever is going on in a country, this is about the um, statehood of Jammu and Kashmir, big issue in India. Let me pull uh, yearly, let's do a monthly report for say April, 2020. So for any language of Wikipedia, and there, there's so many different languages, we can pull these reports for any day, any month, any year. So that's, Gandhi is normally at the top. And let's see what's, what's at the top in uh, April, how things are going last month. Um, Gosh, uh, I struggle to identify who this person is, why he's so popular now. Let me see what else is going on. Ah, you know this one? I, I, my Hindi's not so good, but <laughs> okay. And let's see what's going on here. Well, uh, the classical text, story of Ram. I'm Bedker. Ah, the uh, father of the Constitution. I didn't recognize his face. So the, these are popular, and we can slice and dice this any which way that you guys might be interested. So supposing someone's interested in a given language, or supposing you only want to see the medical articles, or supposing you only want to see what's popular among artists or movies. Wikipedia being a, a digitally native publication, we get a tremendous amount of data out of this, and analytics reports for so many different things. Are, are possible. You don't even need an account. Anyone can can run these reports on, on these kind of data. So I can give you feedback, for example, on which diseases are most popular or most consulted. Or before you even start editing an article, I can give you a report how many people read this so you know is this worth your time to edit something. We could look at different kinds of drugs. You could say I only care about say maternal health or early childhood development and then we find the most popular articles in that field. All, all these kind of reports are popular. Are possible and, and I can assist you with these. All right. Wikipedia has covered a few epidemics in the past. We, we dealt with Ebola. So with Ebola we had to translate all this health information into West African languages, coordinate with local communities there. Someone would do the research in English because that's where the journals are published. We kick it to translators and then they publish it. 
even the World Health Organization, they were sending English and German and French language materials on Ebola to people who didn't, didn't speak this. We dealt with Zika, curated all this information. And again, this, this report's interactive. After this meeting, you can go see these slides and, and click on this and see what kind of products we have. With COVID-19, we have COVID-19 pandemic in every country in the world, a lot of cities, COVID-19 in the aviation industry, sports, how it affected the movie industry, how it affects alcohol production, every kind of intersection with society and, and the medical. Of course, the, the most popular articles, we've got these barometers saying where, what, what's happening in, in Wikipedia, and you can see frenzy of edits around things related to COVID. There's all sorts of reports that, that we can generate to, to respond to these things. Wikipedia has got a system of disaster response. That's what I'm trying to say. And if you want to participate with what the community is already organizing, there's, there's plenty of room for your critiques. We deal with all kinds of misinformation. It's a hot topic. Crazy people encouraging youth to smoke cigarettes. There's lobbyists for this. I'm not saying you need to jump into the most controversial areas. We certainly need people to do conventional medicine that everyday people care about and search for. There's, there's so many everyday issues that could use student feedback, revision. Uh, and when people do this, when we get articles good enough in English, we send these to translators in other countries. Here at the University of Virginia, uh, I and the South Asian Language Department and in, am engaged in a project to develop certain articles of interest to India, uh, neglected tropical diseases and uh, diseases neglected in the, in the Western world. And we send these to translators. They translate them and then they publish them into Wikipedias, respective language Wikipedias in various South Asian languages. So it's not just about what you might do in, in, in English, though certainly if you, if you speak another language, you can edit in any language. Wikipedia, I can support you in this. But also, when you, when you edit this content, it, it's global. So it's a way for you to edit at home and then have a global impact. So we can coordinate translations as you like. Um, the Essential Drugs, that's, that's a current project of the, the Wiki community. Outside of Wikipedia, Wikipedia also processes and publishes a heck of a lot of structured data. So there's a side project or complementary project called Wikidata. If you'd like to learn a bit about working with data sets, or if you already know, or if you're interested in what is the future of linked open data and the semantic web, where we're trying to go with this is to deconstruct claims match them with citations, make statements in Wikidata, and automatically generate certain kinds of Wikipedia articles. Perhaps you can imagine if you have a biography, a person is born, they have an occupation, they die, and if you have the, the birth and death dates of a person and you do that in a database, then you can instantly put those birth and death dates into 300 different languages, anyone who's using numbers, like numbers are really easy to translate. So increasingly, we could be, the quality of Wikipedia, the quality control of Wikipedia is managed in, in databases, whatever we can convert into, into structured data, and then that's exported and managed. And if you can imagine, we're trying to deconstruct things like the side effects of drugs, common symptoms of diseases. That way, when you say COVID has the symptoms of fever, if you translate the word fever into every language, then you manage that essentially in a database, and then in every language, you get quick information if someone has this disease, they, they have fever. I can answer any kind of questions you guys have about anything to do with Wikipedia and medicine. Again, what I'm hoping to do is, if you have any questions, let's have fun with Wikipedia. I don't have any particular expectations, but I think it would be cool if you're looking for a volunteer project and you wanted to edit Wikipedia. I'm, I'm certainly here to support you guys. Any thoughts about anything that I've said? I have one question. Um, I don't know if I missed this, but are the reports that you brought up, are they something that you create or is it something that's available through Wikipedia that anyone could access? Anybody can access those. That's not my special tools. All these reports are, are public online. You don't even need an account to see them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there, there's traffic reports. There's things like uh, project engagement reports. Like you could see all the people who are editing Wikipedia articles on on various art programs. So like different art museums coordinate programs and we could look at traffic reports of who's 
who's editing Wikipedia articles in related to museums or how many people are reading Wikipedia articles for such and such. It's, there's a lot of structured data behind Wikipedia to categorize all these different articles. So if somebody wants to see traffic reports, it's entirely possible to have a career in market research looking at Wikipedia. Other questions from anyone? Uh, when you were talking about these uh, Wikipedia events that you have, mm. like how how does that work? Like how long do those usually last? And like what's like the format of those events? Sure. So a typical Wikipedia, we call these edit-a-thons or wiki parties. So in a typical wiki party, they're 90 minutes. And how it goes is in the first uh, 10 minutes, me or someone like me, a Wikipedia, gives a tutorial about how to edit Wikipedia. I didn't actually show you how to edit Wikipedia today. We just talked about it. And then after that, editing Wikipedia is not such a big deal, but typically for 30 minutes, people uh, have to think about it. So they look at the screen and look at the buttons. And then somewhere along the way, a light bulb clicks and then people can edit. The hardest part of editing Wikipedia it's not the technology of the Wikipedia interface, although a lot of people have hesitation to just push the edit button. It, it just takes the time to, to, to understand what you're doing, that you're going to be live publishing. Many people hesitate. Some people do it right away. But the hardest part of editing Wikipedia is nothing to do with Wikipedia. It's going into the academic literature and pulling out a fact that you want to share. So if somehow you came to a Wikipedia event with a sentence and a citation, then at the event, what you would be doing is browsing in Wikipedia and finding a place to insert that. So supposing you wanted to, you had a paper about a disease that you like, you pull the fact out of there, you go to the Wikipedia article about the disease, you click the edit button, and you can change any of the text in the article. You find a place in the article where you want to put your fact, you type it out, there's a button that says citation, you click the citation button, and then you put in the URL to your paper, or you put in the DOI or the PubMed identifier. It generates a citation automatically based on the identifier. So you have the, the fact, the citation, and then you click Save, and it's immediately published. There's no pre-publication review in Wikipedia. As soon as you click Publish, it goes live for anyone to read. There is a quality control process after that. You could be done after you've made that first edit, but I do suggest that anyone who edits Wikipedia be at hand for about a week. Not that you're committed, but just follow up and see how the Wikipedia community responded to you. Did you pass quality review? Did somebody complain about what you did? If someone took the time to give you a critique of what you did, it's nice to receive that critique and say, thank you for reviewing my edit. But the, the, the commitment to this, it could be just show up to one event one time and if we were to do Wikipedia events, it's not like they're consecutive. It's not like someone needed to, to come to them all. Every Wikipedia event that we did probably would be bring your own academic source, pull out facts, and then add them to Wikipedia. And if we added a more social component, then at the end of the event, we'll say, okay, in the last 15 minutes, everybody come back and, and show off what you did. That's a Wikipedia event. This is typical. So people do these for the arts, for history, for activism. It's possible to also do them in medical schools. Does that answer your question? Any other questions from anybody? Any question you ever had about Wikipedia or anything I can show you, wiki related? Is the person yeah, who keep it, go, oh, go, go. <laughs> Is the <laughs> Thanks. Uh, is the person who edits responsible for putting hyperlinks to other Wikipedia articles in there? And how do you know what should be hyperlinked? The person who edits isn't responsible for anything. Actually, they're responsible for being nice. So please don't come to Wikipedia and start swearing. You're responsible for giving a try. And if somebody gives you feedback, you should, you should accept that. You don't have to we have people who speak broken English, who can barely use computers. We want people to give a good try. The, the responsibility ends there. If you're nice, that's enough. So if you were to edit something and, and you required a, a hyperlink, like suppose you're talking about a disease and then you mention a drug and you think, should I set up the hyperlink to the drug? I can show you how to do that. It's no big deal. But if you don't do that, you're not responsible because 
right after you edit, somebody's going to come see what you did and they'll do the formatting for you. Other people with experience to do formatting, we have copy editors. So every role that you can imagine in a conventional public street house, it also exists in Wikipedia. So if you edit something, then you've made a claim, but then someone has to come fact check you. We have to have somebody review the citation to make sure that it's formatted correctly. Somebody does copy editing for your grammar. Maybe you don't even speak English as a second language or something and you've added a fact and you know how to read an academic paper, but your English isn't good. So somebody's got to correct your English or correct your German, whatever language you're publishing on. Somebody's got to put the hyperlinks or do other kinds of formatting. Supposing somebody wants to do something like insert a table or something odd or needs assistance with an image, there's people to help with that. There's some people in Wikipedia who never add a single word to it, but they support with photography, images, managing the copyright, getting people illustrations. If there's somebody who's written an article, but they need illustrations, then you go to the, the media team, also volunteers, who will help you illustrate your article. You just have to ask. So there's a lot of different departments in Wikipedia. I don't expect any of you to do this, to, to, to know about this. There's so many guides for this. I would just, the, the only thing I would ask of you, use your expertise. So if you're in medical school, you're studying things, where I would suggest you begin is go to the academic literature, find facts that are worth sharing, be ready to cite those, bring that content into Wikipedia. And if you do nothing but write a misspelled word sentence and then put a bare URL to the journal, then somebody will clean up your sentence and somebody will format the citation for you. And if you do more than that, then that's just peachy. Other questions? I was just curious about like how often editors will kind of compete with each other if like someone really loves this you know, set of authors, group of papers, which conflict with this set of authors and kind of how all of that's managed. There's, so there's definitely, there's, there's a street cred in Wikipedia. So people post uh, Instagram and Tumblr and the Twitter and everything else. And they want those, that sweet, sweet internet karma. And Wikipedia has versions of that. So if you're a really cool Wikipedia and you do things like as soon as a celebrity dies, you say, so-and-so is an actor and you change that to so-and-so was an actor or uh, there, there's these kind of things. It's silly. So there, there's a community culture of these kind of things. But if you're talking about conflicts, I mentioned e-cigarettes. So that's a controversial area. So you have a tobacco industry that wants people to consume more nicotine in whatever forms. And we don't normally have corporate intervention. E-cigarettes is really a weird case. It's one of the, the few areas where we actually have corporate intervention messing with the articles. Something uh, where we don't have corporate, corporate conflicts is maybe an acupuncture because there's not like a big corporate acupuncture industry like there's a big corporate tobacco industry or uh, chiropractic or various kinds of alternative medicine. In those kind of cases, there's conflicts. There's people who have certain beliefs that are not reflected in the academic literature and they'll want to do things like cite non-medical papers but make medical claims. We have a system of education in Wikipedia. There are certain things that are prohibited and certain things that are allowed. Certainly anyone can propose anything that they like, but in medicine, we have standards for reliable sources in medicine. And if someone's not citing what we consider to be reliable sources, then we just delete their content without discussion. So or actually the deletion comes first and then they can discuss later, but the answer is, you have to cite certain kinds of, of medical journals when you're making medical claims. We ask for, for secondary sources or review articles. So there's a few things that you can say about alternative medicine from secondary academic sources that are indexed in PubMed, but we, we don't have endless debates about these kind of things. Where there's a debate in Wikipedia, we'll say, the debates always start with what is your source and what does the source say? And there's very few people who have fringe ideas that, that get past that point. People with fringe ideas generally don't bring sources. And if they have sources, there's often not a dispute about what those sources say. There's, there's not a lot of medical controversies in Wikipedia, that is to say. Gotcha, thanks. Other questions from anyone? How would anybody feel about at some future date, scheduling an hour meetup and 
co-editing Wikipedia together on any topics you choose. This is a, a medical meetup, but actually you could edit whatever you like if that made you comfortable. If you're uncomfortable editing medicine first, same process for anything. If you're editing pop culture or sports or politics or anything else, you still come with a source to cite, you pull a fact out, you edit whatever you want, but medical editing is usually what I do. And if VMED would like a, a group activity that could be done online, like I said, I can support you guys in that and then give you an analytics report about whatever, whatever comes to the group. No pressure, but it's a standing offer I make to you guys. Yeah, definitely. It sounds like something we could at least uh, gauge interest for and hopefully have a, a group that would want to. I could give anyone more tour, tour of Wikipedia if you had any requests, but this is, this is what I got for today. Wikipedia is a big, big place. If you had requests for me to cover certain kinds of content or talk about things like, how does Wikipedia interact with medical data? How does Wikipedia interact with medical images? How do translations work? What are some of the focus areas developing content in Wikipedia? We, we break out in groups. Yeah. We can also do uh, medicine adjacent. So if you want to look at uh, molecular, biomolecular, uh, computa computational biology, or pharmacology, or uh, genetics. So we have these kinds of projects in, in Wikipedia also that typically more data intensive, more technical, but this is on the table as well. We can talk about public health, social issues, psychology. There's a large community developing Wikipedia articles on psychology, a bit different from medicine. Some different standards, but still heavy on the academic sources. Various medical dramas on American television. <laughs> Fake doctors uh, having strange conditions. Communities who edit that too. COVID-19. It's not just medical, it affects every part of the world and large community. I guess while you're still here, look at let's look at a wiki project, COVID-19. Just jump over, show you where people organize. Ah. Wiki projects a community of Wikipedians who are collaborating around a particular subject area. So there's wiki projects for sports and for movies, for every academic subject, chemistry, history, economics, engineering, whatever you can imagine. This is wiki project for COVID-19. So in this wiki project, we, we rank the Wikipedia articles by how important they are. An article is more important if it's getting more traffic and if there's more internal links to it. And we have different quality rubrics. We grade these articles in different ways. Articles, they start as a stub. That means that someone's had a couple of sentences. If it's start, you have a couple of paragraphs, but it's, it's kind of a mess. And then it gets a, a grade and it goes up. And as the quality improves, we regrade these things. But this is a way of seeing that we have 20, uh, 2,400 Wikipedia articles related to COVID. This is just in English. So as we translate these, they would have their own box to, to grade the quality of these kind of things. And if something's low quality, but high importance, then that means the community should organize together to m improve the quality of those low quality, high importance articles to, to make them better quality, since we know that so many people are reading them. And if something's low quality and low importance, that's less of a priority. But people coordinate in these kind of ways. Now, Wikipedia is not a place to discuss the subject of any articles. In fact, we delete those kind of comments if they ever come in. So no one can, can give their opinions. This is how I feel about COVID-19 or this is how I feel about acupuncture, these kind of things. We say, this is a place to talk about how do you develop a general reference resource on this topic? What, are, what sources do you wanna talk about? We'll talk about the sources and how well, uh, how well respected they are, who, who's citing them, who's the publisher, who's the author, like what's their reputation? So I'm gonna click talk behind here. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't see this day today, but I just wanna show you what's going on. So there's people having different kinds of conversations about COVID. So uh, 
of course, should we call it coronavirus disease 2019 or is it okay to call it COVID-19? So these are, these are previous controversies in Wikipedia. What are we even gonna, gonna call the thing? Can we use such and such as a source? It's popular and it looks like this one's uh, deprecated because it has, has common errors and we've, we've linked out. There's been community discussion about what kind of errors there are. Should we call the, disease, the, the virus SARS-CoV-2, whatever it is, we, we spell out the name, these kind of things. Uh, other kinds of conversations, uh, graphic design for the different kinds of maps that we're producing. So for every country, there's some kind of epidemi epidemiological map of COVID by region. We're drawing different shapes on the maps and saying, what are the quarantine zones? When do they open? When do they close? Huge amounts of data. This gets represented in Wikipedia. We have community discussion about what should the color scheme be. We have to consider things like people who are colorblind, what's the best practice for these kind of things. And so here's all these different proposals for color. And here's intense debate. What should the colors be? So people, 20 people engaging in this, this debate. Uh, you, could, you could read these kind of things for, for any given if it, given group of people, they, they bring issues, they centrally discuss them. There's straw polls to come up with consensus. So Wikipedia is not an anarchy. You can't do whatever you want, but it's not a democracy either. We don't vote for things. We're, we're trying to come up with consensus. So we make a lot of compromises so that there's not majority rule. Everybody should find some kind of satisfaction in the, the eventual consensus. We, we really don't want outliers who are who are unhappy, especially if they're peacefully participating in, in the discourse. Uh, should, uh, should the Chen Kushi article remain part of this project? So it's a common, common question. Supposing you have uh, a public figure who's kind of associated with the thing. When you're talking about COVID or any kind of disease, like. Are people who are interested in editing medical articles also interested in editing physicians' biographies? And the answer is usually no, but sometimes yes. Generally, people who care about medical content, they don't want to do biographies. And this is coming up in COVID too, apparently. Here's someone associated with COVID and they're saying, do we really want to deal with all the biographies? These kind of questions come up. There's a wiki project for medicine that's just top tier for managing all those medical articles. If anyone had a general question that they wanted to ask or if anyone wanted to say, hello, I'm at University of Virginia and we have this guy Lane, he helps us, but I want a second opinion. It's entirely legitimate for you to, to go to Wikipedia and get second opinions from the other editors there. There's a lot of other people besides me who would be happy to volunteer to support whatever you do. Maybe we should wrap it up if there's no more questions. Last call, any questions from any of you guys? No, thank you very much. Um, if that's all, we, we appreciate uh, your time and definitely we'll uh, send it along to other interested students. Okay, I'm gonna publish this talk as a video and you can send it along. And if you have interest in a future Wikipedia meeting, I'm here for you guys. Thanks so much for coming to the talk. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you.